Hello, I'm Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements Together, and here we are in Adobe Photoshop Elements. Now, in part one of this tutorial series, we looked at colors, foreground and background colors. I'm just going to pick a color here for foreground and a different color for background just for demonstration purposes here. We looked at how to set those using the various tools in the program. Now, where do the foreground and background colors come into play? Well, naturally, the foreground color is going to be your default color for any tools that lay color down on your photo. So in other words, text. Notice my foreground color, which is red in this case, is going to be my default color for any text I add. If I select a paintbrush, for instance, any painting I do is going to be in the foreground color. Anything that adds color, in fact, is going to be in the foreground color by default. Let's erase that with Control Z or Command Z. If I were to select an area using the Marquee tool, for instance, I can fill that area by going to Edit, Fill Selection. And the options are to fill it with either Content Aware, don't worry about that, that's a different tutorial, the foreground color or the background color. So I can choose what it fills with as well as some standard colors here. We can choose to fill it with the foreground color. Control Z that. I can also stroke it. Now stroke it means to color the line around the outside of this selection area. So if I go to edit menu and I select stroke or outline, you see that it is by default in the foreground color. And I can select the width of that and whether that stroke is outside, centered on the selection line or inside the selection line. And let's make this a little larger so we can actually see it. We'll make it into 12 pixels and click OK. And you see that using the foreground color, it created this particular stroke or this outline around my selected area. Let's get rid of that using Control Z, Command Z. Now there are actually a couple of ways to fill an area or to fill your picture or to fill a selected area. So if I again draw a selection on here, I can also fill it by using the bucket, selecting the bucket tool. And if I've got my tolerance pushed all the way to the end, I can just click like that and it will fill. There's another way, a simpler way to fill rather than using the bucket or rather than going up to edit fill. It's control Z to get rid of that. And that is using a keyboard shortcuts. If you hold down the alt or the option key on a Mac and press backspace, the selected area will fill with your foreground color. If you hold down the control or the command key on a Mac, control backspace or command backspace, will fill that with the color. So that's another use of foreground and background colors. Now those are all fairly obvious, but let's just get rid of all this, deselect it. There's also not so obvious uses for the foreground and background color. I'm going to go to the filter gallery here under filters. And the filter gallery, of course, is going to show us examples of all these different filters at work. So we go to the filter gallery and a lot of these are just going to affect the picture as is. But if we go down here to sketch, and although these are charcoal sketches, notice what happens if I apply them to the picture. Why are they orange and yellow instead of black and white? Well, they are because my foreground and background colors are red and gold. So if I just press D like that, get them back to black and white, when I go to, again, my filter gallery, and I go to my sketches, when I apply any of these kind of sketch uh, effects to the picture, it's going to do it in plain black and white, but these effects are based on what your foreground and your background colors are. So if I want to use a different sort of look for it, say I wanted to use, say, a heavy green for my foreground and maybe a yellow for my background color, and now go to my filter gallery, you see that all of those sketch effects are going to apply using variations of the green and the yellow. So the foreground and background colors have more effect on the program than simply affecting paint or simply affecting the pencil color or simply affecting the text color. They can actually affect a number of the special effects, especially these filter effects in the program. Now, if you want to know a lot more about this program and a lot more about the tools here in the toolkit, be sure to check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. If you want to know every single thing there is to know about Photoshop elements and Premiere elements, be sure to check out our books. The moviepix.com guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Photoshop Elements together. That's available at Amazon.com. And of course, right here at the MoviePix store, I'm Steve Rossetti. Thanks for joining me. See you at MoviePix.com.